Hi there, this is Thomas Brett for the Pro Audio Files and thomasbrettmixing.com. In this tutorial, I'm going to be giving you a total rundown of all of the vocal effects I used in one of my recent mixes. The track I'm working on today is a cover of a popular Turkish rap song performed by my wife, Gülşah Yaldız. Make sure to check out her YouTube channel if you'd like to listen to the full song. Let's start by taking a listen to a few sections of the song in order to get an idea of what the vocals are doing. Hep aynı soruları sordum Ya kaldım Düşünüp kötüye yordum Bir kenara çekilip uzunca durdum Durduramadım gözyaşlarımı boğuldum Neler umdum da bak ne buldum Ben onu soğuk rüzgarıyla savruldum İçimin acısı yakıyor kavruldum Gelen o vakitsiz hasretlere sordum Bir şey gelmez elden Awesome. So in this song, I had the lead vocals split across four separate channels, each with slightly different processing and slightly different effects. Let's quickly compare these four different channels. Kendimi bugün onun yerine koydum. Düşünüp kötüye yordum. Bir kenara çekilip uzunca durdum. İyisimi geri çekileyim. Ya da savaşıp yara alayım. Vazgeçtim inan. Kendimden çoktan. Cool. So the main reason I've split this vocal across four separate channels is that in each section she's singing in a slightly different style. In the intro she's singing very softly, in the verses she's singing with a kind of rap voice, more kind of like speech or talking, and in the chorus she's really going for it, really belting. This being the case, I kind of had to treat each of these vocals slightly differently, using slightly different EQ curves and slightly different amounts of compression to get them all sounding the way I wanted. The fourth channel we have here is my kind of telephone effect, this distorted lo-fi effect that I've used pretty heavily throughout the song. When it comes to using lo-fi effects on vocals, I'll typically start with the same processing chain that I have on my other channels, and then insert a saturation, distortion, or lo-fi plugin at the very end of the chain. This way I'm starting with a really pristine sounding vocal, and making a lo-fi version of that pristine vocal, instead of starting with the raw vocal, which probably doesn't sound very good to begin with, and making it sound even worse with our lo-fi plugin. İyisimi geri çekileyim. İyisimi geri çekileyim. A fairly unconventional favourite plugin of mine for lo-fi effects is actually Echo Boy by Sound Toys. Although this is actually a delay plugin, at some point I discovered that if you reduce the echo time and feedback to zero, you can actually use each of the analog modelled hardware units in the plugin as saturators or distortion units. One of the main reasons I like to use lo-fi effects on vocals is to create stark contrasts, in this case between the tiny, distorted telephone vocal we've got going in the pre-chorus and the beautiful, full frequency range, powerful vocals we've got coming up in the chorus. A few more tiny tweaks I'll make to my lo-fi vocals along those lines are to reduce the width knob with an echo boy in order to get these vocals sounding really mono and really small in the center. And also to use the built-in low cut just to filter off any additional low end which might have been missed by the telephone effect. Awesome. Now let's move on to our effects buses and take a look at some of the plugins we're using. When it comes to mixing rap vocals, I'm not a huge fan of using a lot of reverb. Instead, I often prefer to use a heavily filtered delay, as I feel like it takes up less space in the mix and really allows the vocal to stay up front and in your face. I'll typically name this kind of effect my Vox Delay Constant channel, as it's usually constantly there underneath the vocal, just providing a little bed of ambience underneath it. Kendimden çoktan ama senden olmuyor kendimi kop As you can hear, if I roll back the low and high cuts I've got going on this delay, it suddenly starts taking up too much space and clouding the vocal. Let's take a listen to the delay effect in solo so that you can hear the difference a bit more clearly. Kendimden çoktan ama senden olmuyor kendimi koparamıyorum bir an vazgeçtim inan. Kendimden çoktan bir 
Unlike in our lo-fi telephone vocal that we were talking about a minute ago, where we used Echo Boy as a direct insert and reduced the width in order to make it really mono and in the center, for this delay send, we want to make the delay effect more stereo and get it out of the way of our lead vocal in the center. The combined result of the stereo widening and filtering we've done on this delay means it isn't taking up too much space in the center of our stereo image, but also isn't eating into the mid-range and high-end clarity of our lead vocals. The next effect, which I used pretty heavily in this song, was a really distorted telephonic delay throw, which I used to emphasize certain important lyrics in the chorus, and to fill in some of the empty spaces between words. By default, my lead vocal was sent to this effect at minus infinity, so that I could then go in and send individual words into the effect using automation. In Reaper, I have a macro setup which allows me to double click on the automation line in order to insert four envelope points at my time selection. I can simply make a time selection of the words I'd like to affect, double click, and raise the send level to my desired amount. The next thing I'd like to show you is the stereo widening effect that I'm using on the vocals. An extremely popular and common technique that's been used by professional mixers for the last 30 or 40 years is micro pitch shifting on vocals. This effect was originally popularized through an Eventide hardware effects unit, the H3000. Luckily, nowadays we have easy access to this kind of effect in the digital realm using plugins such as Soundtoy's Little Micro Shift, which was actually designed by the same people who designed the original Eventide unit. Let's take a quick listen to this effect on our lead vocal and then play around with our send levels to figure out how much of it we want to use. As you can hear, when I use too much of it, it's not the most pleasant effect in the world. The real goal here isn't to make the effect blatantly obvious in the mix, but instead to just gently blend it in underneath your lead vocal to the point that it's felt rather than heard. Through trial and error, and using this kind of effect on vocals for the last 10 years or so, I've determined that keeping this effect around minus 25 dB lower than my lead vocal usually works pretty well. If I need a little bit more of the effect, I'll bump it up to minus 20, and if I need a little bit less, I'll bump it down to minus 30. But I find that anything below minus 30 or above minus 20 typically doesn't give me the results I'm after. The final effect send I used on this song was a plate reverb, which I only used in certain sections on certain vocals. In the intro section of this song, the lyrics are kind of introspective, with the artist reflecting on past mistakes and kind of talking to themselves. While I'm typically not a huge fan of using reverb on vocals throughout the whole song just for the sake of it, in this case, I thought it could be a cool effect to make it seem like the vocalist was trapped inside their own head, talking to themselves. The reverb plugin I'm using for this purpose is Little Plate by Sound Toys. After choosing the reverb sound I'd like to use within a song, the first thing I do is time the decay or length of the reverb to the BPM of the track. In order to do this, I'll open up a calculator and divide 60,000, which is the number of milliseconds in one minute, by the BPM of the track. The resulting number is the number of milliseconds between each quarter note. After we know this number, we can multiply it by two in order to get half notes, and then multiply it by two again in order to get one bar. The main reason to do this is to make sure that all of your reverb tails are ending rhythmically, meaning they're not going to cut out short or ring out for too long, causing an unnecessary buildup of reverberated mud within your mix. Another important step in making sure your reverbs aren't taking up too much space within your mix is to EQ them in the same way that you'd EQ an instrument to get rid of any unwanted frequencies and mud. In the Soundtoys Little Plate plugin, this is as simple as using the built-in low cut filter to get rid of any unnecessary low and rumble.
For vocal reverb, I'm typically setting my low cut filter somewhere between 400 to 600 hertz, which is also a technique that the engineers at Abbey Road Studios back in the 60s and 70s would use on a lot of records. Alongside my low cut filter, I'm also using a bell cut at around 700 hertz, just to get rid of some boxy frequencies that caught my ear. One final and awesome trick that I almost always use when dialing in vocal reverb is to place a de at the start of my reverb chain. One thing I really dislike about reverb is when sibilance is reverberated and you get this big high-end fluttery sound every time there's a sibilant letter. Basically, what we've done here is over de the vocal, which is being sent into the reverb, meaning the amount of high-end flutter we're getting every time there's a sibilant letter is drastically reduced. One very important thing I'd like to note when using reverb is that you shouldn't just be sending your lead vocals to your reverb, but also any effects that your lead vocals are going to, to the reverb, at the same amount. Awesome. That just about covers all the vocal effects that we use in this track. If you're looking for more tutorials and guides on music production and mixing, Make sure to check out my website, thomasbrettmixing.com, where you can find a full list of all of my Pro Audio Files articles, alongside other educational content. This has been Thomas Brett for the Pro Audio Files. Until next time.